In today's video, we are going to turn one of these Delwise 3040s into a retro emulation beast that only costs $30. So what you're going to need is an 8GB or above USB stick plugged into a Windows computer and a Delwise 3040. So now, we have to choose what OS we're going to use for this emulation device. The latest version of Ubuntu desktop takes up too much storage, so we decided to use Linux Lite 5.8. This OS works well as it's very light due to it being a little bit older and having a very low storage requirement. So first, what you're going to want to do is open up Chrome, then type in Linux Lite. And then click on the link below download, the one I'm clicking on here. And scroll down until you see uh, previous versions right here. Click on this bar and click on the one below it. And wait for the web page to load. Then scroll down until you find your location or preferred mirror. Then scroll down till you see 5.8 and click on it. Then click on this one, the one I'm clicking on here and save it wherever you'd like and it should start downloading and just let it download until it's finished uh, even though I've already downloaded this so I'm just going to cancel it so now what you're going to want to do is open a new tab and type in Belina Etcher and then click on this one click download Etcher then click on this one at the top and save it I've already got it downloaded, so once it's done downloading, just open the file, click yes to the pop-ups, then Berlin Etcher should open up like this. And once it does, you can just close out of Chrome. And next, we're going to click on Flash from File. And you know that file we downloaded earlier? That's coming into play now, so just click on that one. And select your USB device, and click on Flash. Click yes to the pop-up and wait for it to flash. Once it is done flashing, it will say flash complete and you can just close out of Belina Etcher at this point and inject the USB stick. Now, you're going to unplug the USB stick from your computer and then plug it into your Dell Wise. Then press the power button on your Dell Wise to turn it on. Once you've plugged your USB stick in your Dell Wise and switched your Dell Wise on, you're just going to want to spam F12 as your your Dell was booting up then select your USB stick next you're going to want to click on the second option then wait for this part to load once setup is done loading and you've reached this screen just select your language then hit continue wait for it to load to the next window Next, select your keyboard layout. Once you're at this part, check the box that says install third party software for graphics and Wi Fi hardware and additional media formats. And hit continue. Next, you're going to want to check the box that says erase disk and install Linux. Then click on install now. Once this window pops up, just hit continue. Then select your location on this map and hit continue. Next, select the name of your system and pick a password and then hit continue. Now, let the operating system install. Once the install is done, you're going to want to click on the restart now button and let it boot into your new system. Now, once you're all booted in, you can unplug your USB stick. However, you're probably going to want to uh, use it later on for storing all your games. Uh, so now you're just going to want to open up Firefox and once you're loaded in just open a new tab and close the previous one then type in RetroArc or RetroArch however you want to say it and click on the top result here just click on do not consent 
and scroll down and click get retro arc then keep scrolling down till you see Linux and click on the available on itch.io symbol once you're loaded into the next web page scroll down and click on the one that says RetroArch Linux x86 64 stable.zip and then click on download this will open up this window just click save file and then ok and just save it to your downloads it's button and wait for it to download once the file was done installing just close out of Firefox and open up your user files which should be on the desktop here open up downloads folder then uh, extract here right click the file and extract click on extract here and let it extract once it is done extracting the window will close down you can open up this new folder now you open up this app image file and now you're finished installing RetroArch however there is one thing I suggest you do before you start playing your own games click on the settings tab on the side then click on drivers right here click menu and then change this to XMB then restart RetroArch by closing it and going back to the file we opened earlier now we have a much more user friendly interface that works much better so this is where the part come this is the part where we have to get our ISO files loaded on a USB stick now for legal reasons I'm not going to tell you how to get these ISO files but you probably know where to get them so once you've plugged in your ROM loaded USB stick all you're going to want to do is press enter on load core go down to download a core and scroll down until you find the consoles of your ROMs so the games I want to play are Sony PS1 and Sony PS2 so I've just selected this Sony PlayStation one, this Sony PlayStation 2 one. Just press enter on the ones you want and they should load in. So next, you just want to go back and scroll all the way to this plus and do scan directory. Hit enter on this. Uh, go back like this using the slash. Scroll all the way down to media. And then whichever one is, so your user, then go to your directory right here. Then just click on scan this directory. And it will scan for all the ROMs you have installed. So just wait for that to finish. Once it says scanning directory complete in the bottom left, you are done scanning your directory and can exit out of this menu just by clicking on the left. So now all you're going to want to do is first of all check your input settings. I have a controller plugged in so I'm just going to change the port 1 controls. Make sure that all looks good. Which I think looks fine. So I'm going to leave that as is. Oh, no, I've got to do that. that out. And simply to play a game, you go over here, load core, load the core of the console you want to load. I'm doing PlayStation. And then go all the way over to your games list. These are for the different consoles. I'm going to do PS1 first. I'm going to load up Crash Bandicoot, hit run, current core, and then hit run. And right here, there's a new window. Let's boot it up and you can now play Crush Bandicoot or whatever game you've installed on here. So we're just going to see how Crush Bandicoot runs. And 
and then we're going to conclude up this video. So I'm going to skip this cutscene. Right here, yeah, I can just start the game. Load up the first level here. And this game's running great, from what I can see. Now, I believe this is the PAL version, or the NTSC, I'm not sure. And it is running at its native PS1 frame rate, which is quite low. I believe it's 24, 30, 60 FPS. But whatever you see in the video outcome is what it is. But since I'm looking through something else, I can't tell for sure. Overall, the game's running. So, is the Dell Wise a good machine for retro emulation? I'd say yes. I'd say this has been quite the success. <laughs> this game is quite fun. I'd actually recommend it to you guys. Oh, I'm struggling it. There we go. So, yeah. It's actually very nice. The game runs great. And I have no complaints. And that's that. Please like and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one.